These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Okay. So our job is to calculate the degrees of unsaturation for this molecule. Isn't it also to find the molecular formula? Now in order to find the degrees of unsaturation, you'll need to know the molecular formula. Yeah. So we can use X as usual to stand for the halogens. Good. Minus the number of hydrogens. Oh, I'll put myself in that room. Good. Very simple formula. Good. And what would that tell us? Well, um, that would tell us, I don't know. Remember that the degrees of unsaturation tells you the number of rings oh, and plus the number, plus the number of pi bonds. This is the best way to think of it. Number of rings plus the number of pi bonds. That tells us the number of rings plus the number of pi bonds should be one. Let's confirm that here. How many rings does this molecule have? Zero. And how many pi bonds? So that confirms that the formula would give us the right answer. Usually in real life, in real life when you use the degrees of unsaturation, you use it because you don't know the structure. This is just for practice to confirm the structure. But normally we would just be given C7H14. Well, if we're given C7H14, we know there's either one pi bond or one ring, and that's very useful if we're trying to be detectives and puzzle out the structure. All right, so this confirms that the degrees of unsaturation formula works for part A of number 41. Did you say you're skipping to part E? Yeah. For number 41? Yeah. Okay. Is that what you got as well? I got three. So let's talk through what your calculations were there. So we have two plus, how many carbons did you find? Seven, six, uh, one, two, three, four, five.
five, six. Where did you think the extra carbon was? Not sure? Okay. So yeah, that's C6, and then one nitrogen. So two times six plus one nitrogen minus 11 hydrogens over two. That would give us 12, 14, 15 minus 11, four over two. Two degrees of unsaturation, and what do those two degrees of unsaturation tell us? How many rings does this molecule have? One. And how many pi bonds? One. Right. Now, if we didn't already know the structure, what this would tell us is maybe there's two rings. Or maybe there's one ring and one pi bond. Or maybe there's two pi bonds. So it doesn't tell you exactly what the structure is, but at least it gives you a clue. Well, once again, we've confirmed that the degrees of unsaturation formula works for a new compound. By the way, remember, when you learned about this in lecture, I think your instructor actually explained why this formula works. But you don't really have to think that through in order to use it. You can just memorize the formula and trust that it'll work. Let's just go to 42 now. Sounds good. Saturated. Yeah. That's so true. Can't you just compare them with that? And so what would that tell you? <clears throat> There's two degrees of unsaturation. That's right. Basically, you're using this formula by doing it in your head. So okay. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so you're saying that you, you just did, if it, was completely, uh, if it was completely unsaturated, there would be 2 times 7 plus 2, which is 16 uh, hydrogens, because there's no complications from nitrogen nor halogens here. So that's just fine, but you really are still using the formula. Oh. This is 16 minus 12, or 4 over 2. Two degrees of unsaturation. Is that what we all got? Mm -hmm. And what does that tell us about this compound? That there's either one ring and one benzene and, and one double bond, or there's two but double bonds and zero rings. Did you say benzene? No, no, no. I didn't oh. say that. Okay. So, yeah, what are the possibilities again? A ring and a double bond. Right. Two rings and no double bond. Good. Let's clarify that a little bit. Instead of talking about double bonds, we should talk about pi bonds. There could be zero rings and two pi bonds, which means this could consist of two separate double bonds or a single triple bond. Right? So if you have two pi bonds, that could come from two separate double bonds or a single triple bond. That's why when we wrote this down, it's best not to say plus the number of double bonds. Instead, you want to say that the degrees of unsaturation is the number of rings plus the number of pi bonds. And then the formula will handle triple bonds as well as it does uh, double bonds. But we can't tell yet which of these situations we're in. Hopefully we have other clues to figure out the rest of that. Okay. Should we do F or should we just go on? We can do B and then move to one with F. So let's just do B. Okay. 42B? Again, our job is to calculate the degree of unsaturation. Six, six. That's fast. added the one and subtracted the seven. Right. 
16, 18, 19, minus 7 is 12 over 2, which is 6. Now, it doesn't seem like a huge help because that means there's lots of different things. So this could be over here. Wait, no, isn't it 19 minus 9? Did I mess up again? There's mm -hmm. two oxygens. That's right, well, but oxygens do not appear in the formula. I think we saw that last time as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oxygens don't appear in the formula. So what effect do the oxygens have on the degrees of unsaturation? No effect. Oxygens have no effect on the degrees of unsaturation. So we were right before, 16, 18, 19, minus 7. Oxygens have no effect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 6 degrees of unsaturation. So that means a lot of, maybe a lot of rings and double bonds.